Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to focus on semiconductors this week, and we're also going to take a look at gold. And I titled the video, And the Kitchen Sink, because after Broadcom came out with their earnings Thursday evening, and the investors just trashed the stock, and I'll talk about that in a second, one of the, uh, one of the brokerages came out and said that they threw out the kitchen and the sink. You know, there's a saying, there's an old saying that says we're going to take everything but the kitchen sink or we're going to throw out everything but the kitchen sink. Um, and in this case, I think it's totally appropriate. They to they threw out the kitchen and the sink. And uh, we're going to see a Broadcom here when you take a look at it. This is what happened on Friday. The close was down 5.5%. At the low, it was down 8.6%. So huge huge move to the downside big volume on here the volume was 10.1 million uh, for the day kind of the opposite of what happened with the big move that happened to the upside back in March all right so let's uh, start off I want to take a look at the Philadelphia semiconductor index first okay here's a weekly view of the Sox index and you can see we had a potential reversal candle here down 20.22.26 on the on the uh, semiconductor index uh, potential reversal. And I always say potential because it looks like a reversal candle to the downside, but you need continued selling to confirm that that's exactly what's going on. Now, just like I talked about last week in terms of if something fails, if a reversal candle fails, it can be very bad. If this were to fail, if we were to take out for, uh, last week's high, that would be extremely bullish. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Does the low hold or does the high hold from last week? The low, the three-week low in here, actually it's more than a three-week low, but the low of three weeks ago, or does last week's high hold? Uh, let me take a look at the Elliott wave count. The wave count I've got on this is that we had primary wave four completed in December and that we're off in, in primary wave five. That would imply that we have five intermediate waves to the upside that we're working. And right now, I think there's a pretty good chance that what we've done is we've seen this wave two pull back here. Okay, it's been pretty quick and it's actually pulled back a little over 50%. It's in that zone between 50 and 61.8%. So now we have to watch and see, do we get some kind of uh, turn of turn around? Here's the daily view. Do we get some uh, some kind of uh, support that comes in here? Actually, I don't need that dotted line anymore. Uh, so that's the daily picture. And uh, let me go back to the weekly view. And let's take a look at SMH, which is the semiconductor ETF, and see how it looks. I think it's very similar. I've got a similar wave count on SMH. Uh, so I, I'm looking for a fifth wave to complete. And right now, the real question is, is this going to be some kind of ending diagonal or is it going to be a pure impulse wave? And by pure impulse, I mean four not overlapping one. Okay, Wave three is the only w uh, motive wave in which four cannot overlap one. When you have a motive wave one or a motive wave five in here, uh, it can overlap if you have some kind of diagonal pattern, like an ending diagonal, which happens many times in a wave five. So anyway, right now we're looking for some kind of resumption to the upside in here. The high on SMH was 108.80, and this low, this three-week low, let me make sure I've got the three-week low, 97.65 there, 97.61 is the three-week low. So that is the pattern. Let me... See if I've got something. Here's how I'm looking at it. Let me go ahead and convert that to the daily view. So then we're looking at this kind of picture here. And again, it's the same kind of retracement. Now, the, this happened pretty quick uh, as compared to the, the length of time it took to do a one. But a lot of times the pullbacks uh, like this can be, especially when they're a sharp pullback, they can be fairly rapid. So now looking for, and even this wave two in here, let's take a look and see this minor wave two, uh, how far did it pull back as compared to one? We are right now, we've gone over 50% of this move. Okay, we're in that same zone. We're in that 50 to 61.8%. So it's well deep enough to now get some support 
and come in and uh, and start resuming this move to the upside here. That's what we'll be looking for. All right, that's the semiconductors. Let's take a look at the VIX. Okay, so here's the uh, VIX, the uh, market volatility index on a daily count. This is a daily view. All right, so look at this breakdown that's occurred. We broke this trend line. It looks like we had some kind of a sideways triangle in here, and we broke down on Friday. So to me, this is just reinforcing the fact that the bulls are not, are, I mean, the, the bears are not able to, to get the uh, build the support in here. Okay, this is reinforcing the bullish view, in my opinion, uh, because the market really on Friday, the market uh, really didn't move all that far percentage wise in terms of the movements in the major indices. I think one of the major indices was had moved maybe close to 1%, but it wasn't even 1%. All the rest of them were very minor moves. To get this kind of a breakdown in the VIX actually kind of surprised me a little bit. So uh, watching to see if that uh, doesn't uh, indeed reinforce the bullish view that uh, we're kind of looking for here short term. Okay, let's take a look at gold. Okay, this is the big picture on gold, and I haven't talked about gold in uh, many weeks. When was the last time I talked about gold? It was May 22nd, and I think I said waiting on gold on May 22nd. So we'll zoom in on this a minute. This is the big picture. Okay, so here's what we're, what I'm expecting. You know, we've got this big A, B, C move. Well, why, do, why am I expecting the move to be like this to the downside? Well, because this first wave A was a five wave move. And when once you have a five wave move, it's telling you the major direction of the market, okay? That the that the trend uh, is now to the downside. So then it's just a matter of how is it going to morph? How is it going to correct? What kind of form is it going to take? And it's taken a while to get any kind of idea. Look at all this choppiness that's going on in here. But I think we've got this B wave coming back in here. And let me give you a little bit more detail. So here's what I think. Here's the five waves to the downside in here. And so what I think we've got here is an A, B, C uh, zigzag within this B wave. OK, so this is like a zigzag within a bigger zigzag. Potentially, that's the way we're looking at it. This is the bullish scenario and it is right now playing out. OK, so when I look at this and say, well, how far back can a B wave pull back? Well, really, in a zigzag form, I look for 78.6 percent. Let's call it 79 is about the maximum I'd be looking for. OK, so that's B versus A. So here's 61.8 percent of A um, and here's 79 percent of A in here. So this is the zone that we'd be looking at. Then the other thing I started to look at is you look at this A, B, C, and this B was a very nice triangle. And I can give more detail. I mean, this is how it played out. And this is how the wave structure came down over here. So at this point, at 156, we get C equal to A, OK, in terms of the move. And so now we're looking at this and say, well, OK, B zone is like up in here for B. Here's a potential target for C. So now you start to zone in and say, where's a high probability target? But then you still have to look at, let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Let me see if I can do that here. You still have to watch the wave structure. You still have to watch and see what's happening as we move on out. We had a couple of big weeks and a big move in here. And then this week, we're actually down three cents on GLD. So we'll watch and see how it plays out. But right now, this is this is the path. I think this is the direction we're going. And so far, it seems to be reinforcing that. So that is the bullish picture on gold. All right, that's it for this weekend. Let me double check my notes. Yes, it is. <laughs> all right, everyone have a great weekend. It's Father's Day weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I know the U.S. Open's on this weekend. I'm going to be watching that and, um, and checking that out. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, hit that little subscriber button. And check out the website over here at joehenches.net. Everyone, have a great weekend.